You've probably heard about the new National Association of Realtors, NAR, changes that are shaking things up, especially for real estate buyer agents. And that means they're affecting you, the home buyer, too. This video is here to help you navigate these changes so you can protect your interests. Seriously, you really need to know this information. So let's get to it. Today I'm going to focus on what's happening here in California where I am based. The situation might be identical in your state or it might not. So it's a good idea to check with local realtors about what's going on in your area. Hidden fee for home buying without a realtor. Let's start with one of the biggest issues the new rules have brought about. I know a lot of you buyers who are hoping to buy a home without a realtor might be thinking, awesome, I'm going to save a ton of money by going at a alone. But will you really save? First of all, there's a hidden fee that comes with being an unrepresented buyer. This fee is buried in the contract between the home seller and the listing agent. So you're not privy to the exact terms. But here's the kicker. What the home seller nets from the sale is directly tied to this fee. And that in turn affects whether or not you land the house. Secondly, by not having an agent with local expertise and solid relationships with listing agents, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. This could cost you money, increase your risk, and even hurt your chances of getting the house in the first place. If you're wondering why, check out my video on buying a house without a realtor. Here's how from a realtor in 2024. Plus, without your own representation, you're opening the door to potential exploitation by the listing agent who's working for the seller. Remember, anything you say can can be used and will be used against you in negotiations that happen later on. Now let me show you what that unrepresented buyer fee looks like on the California Association of Realtor Forms. This is a California residential listing agreement and if you look down here you'll see this is where uh, the agent will normally put in the percentage that they're charging the seller for selling their home and then like right here additional compensation to seller's broker if buyer is unrepresented. That percentage will go right here and it will be baked into this contract that you'll never see. But what if you start off as an unrepresented buyer working with the listing agent and then later you decide to hire an agent? Does the seller still have to pay the listing agent that extra fee? Maybe. In my humble opinion, I see potential litigation on the horizon because this is definitely a gray area. For example, let's say you contact the listing agent to see a home. The listing agent agent opens the door for you, gets you the disclosures, stays for hours while your inspector takes a look and provides you with the contracts to make an offer. Then at the last minute, you see the light and decide that you need to hire a buyer agent to represent your interests. That listing agent put in some serious time on your behalf. Should they work for free? And does the seller still have to pay that extra fee? To consider the possible answer, let's look at the wording in the California Real Estate Listing Agreement on this issue. And and remember, this might differ in other states. Okay, this is the part of the contract that explains everything above where you fill in lines. And what we see here, what we're looking at is C. This is the explanation of that portion. And it says, optional additional compensation for unrepresented buyer. Seller agrees to pay broker the additional amount specified in paragraph 2C2, that was what I just showed you, if checked for services rendered only if the buyer is not not represented by a real estate agent. If a buyer is represented by a real estate agent, whether working through broker or another brokerage company, then paragraph 2C2 does not apply. So what does only if the buyer is not represented mean? To me, it sounds like if a buyer becomes represented at any time, the seller is off the hook for paying the additional fee. That's good news for buyers if that's how courts interpret this. But I can can easily see an attorney arguing that the buyer was unrepresented at first, maybe even signed a non-representation agreement and the listing agent did a lot of work. So the agent earned that extra fee. This wouldn't be good for buyers because it would have been smarter to start with their own agent whose fee would have covered all that work, potentially making the buyer's overall costs lower. But let's flip the script. What if the litigation goes the other way and buyers always win? Meaning that if a buyer 
buyer becomes represented at any point, the seller doesn't owe the listing agent any extra fee. That sounds like a win, right? You, as a buyer, could ask the listing agent to do all the work usually handled by a buyer agent, okay, some of it, and then later switch to a buyer agent without any penalties, right? No, wrong. There's a cost to that. If you've already asked the listing agent to do a bunch of work for you and then you change your mind, you've likely shot yourself in the foot. Why? Because listing agents hold a lot of sway with sellers. If you irritate them, you're lowering your chances of getting the house. By the way, I'm Carrie Hill, lawyer turned realtor. And if you're buying or selling a house in Marin, I can help. And if you're not in Marin, I've got a network of trusted realtors across the United States. In both cases, I love to help people just like you make a smart move. Just email me. Seeing homes. Let's talk about what's probably your number one concern. Seeing homes. Here's how you can do that while keeping your interests protected. Seeing homes, contact an agent. You've probably heard that the new NAR rules require agents to have signed buyer agreements before they can show you a home. And yes, agents can get hit with hefty fines if they don't follow this rule. The problem, you want to see a home, but you aren't ready to commit to an agent yet, which makes total sense if you haven't had the chance to fully vet an agent or two or three or whatever you need. So here's what you should ask for. Non-exclusive agreement or a single property property agreement with a one day expiration and zero calendar days of continued right to payment. Okay, this last one's a bit tricky. So make sure you find where this is mentioned as the wording could vary. Let's take a look at the California Association of Realtors contract. Okay, so this is the form where you're gonna want that one day to be is right here. It's gonna be beginning that one day and ending the next day. Regarding that non-exclusive portion, that comes down here, all these contracts are automatically non-exclusive for California unless exclusive here is checked. Okay, that marker is not particularly great, but you get the point. You want it to stay non-exclusive. You don't want exclusive because exclusive covers any house that you might see, whether or not that agent had anything to do with it. So you want to avoid that. And then the last thing is about that zero continuation right payment. And that goes on, meaning that the agent will still get paid if they showed you a house even though you're not under contract anymore, that's like a protection for the agent. And that portion of the contract is found a little bit further down on, on this page where this was the amount of compensation that you agree to pay your buyer agent. But right down here, you can see continued right for to payment for the broker involved properties. And you, at the beginning anyway, you want the continuation period shall be zero. You want a big zero right there. Keep in mind, these super flexible terms are something you'll likely get just at the beginning of your relationship with an agent. When you sign your next contract with that agent, expect the duration to be longer than a day. But don't worry, there are cancellation rights too, usually no more than 30 days and sometime immediate. Also, expect the continuing rights to be longer. Remember, agents work for free until a deal closes and they incur lots of expenses along the way. So an agent might give you this short one day viewing agreement just once as it's reasonable for both of you to determine if you're a good match to work together. Seeing homes, open houses. No need to sign anything to check out an open house. The new rules only apply to buyer representation, so open house agents who are there for the seller don't need an agreement with you to let you see the home. However, in California, an open house agent might dangle some non-public information about the home and claim you need to sign a buyer representation agreement to get that extra information. That's not true. While the California Association of Realtors recommends having a signed agreement before sharing non-public information, it's not a requirement, not a rule. So if an agent says it is a rule, they're either misinformed or they're not being honest. But let's say you're considering signing an agreement at an open house, maybe because the house next door is also for sale and you want the agent to show it to you. Now, at that point, you have triggered the requirement for a buyer agreement. Safeguard yourself by insisting on those terms I mentioned earlier. Non-exclusive, one day, no continuation period. My best advice
advice, don't sign agreements with open house agents. They represent the seller's interests, not yours, even if they're not the listing agent. They're still working with the listing agent, which means their loyalties lie with the seller. And consider hiring your own real estate buyer agent before you start touring homes. Buyer agents will provide you with tips, even when you go to an open house, to protect your interests. Seeing homes, Zillow, Realtor.com ads. When you push a button on an online home listing site, you'll be connected to an agent. If you want that agent to show you a home, they'll need a buyer agreement. Apparently, Zillow is already using a seven day touring agreement that locks buyers into using the assigned agent if they want to make an offer on the home within those seven days. Avoid that seven day agreement like the plague. You don't want to commit to an agent you haven't vetted. Stick to the non-exclusive one day, no continuation period agreement. If they don't offer it, ask for it. A better idea to see homes that you like that you see on Zillow? Start vetting agents now. I'll cover how to do that in a bit. And then call your chosen agent to show you the home. But plus, it's good karma. Those agents on Zillow and Realtor.com aren't getting paid to do footwork for you. So don't waste their time. Will sellers still pay for buyer agents? Let's get into this hot topic. Will home sellers continue to pay for buyer agents under the new rules? Okay, I've covered this before in other videos. My answer is absolutely yes. Here's why. The net profit is king. At the end of the day, sellers care about one thing, their net profit. Whether they pay the buyer agent's fee or not, it's all about how much they walk away with after the sale. If the numbers work out in their favor, they'll pay the fee, attracting more buyers. Sellers know that by covering the buyer agent fee, they can attract more potential buyers to their home. More buyers means more competition, which can lead to higher offers. It's a win-win for the seller, boosting buyer power. When buyers can put more of their cash into their down payment, they often qualify for lower interest rates and have more money to spend on the home. This is great news for sellers because it means buyers can afford to pay more for their property. Tax benefits. If a seller pays the buyer agent fees, it lowers the profit on paper, which can positively affect their taxes. Okay, I'm not a tax consultant, but I'm pretty sure that's how it work out. And that gives sellers a financial incentive to cover those costs. It's just smart business. For a deeper look at why sellers will continue to pay, check out my video, how real estate commission changes in 2024 are shaking things up. I'll also cover the history of buyer agency and whether I think agent fees are like drop. Spoiler, the answers might surprise you. Finding a good agent. Choosing the right real estate agent is crucial. And here are some top ways to find the best one for you. YouTube. Start by checking out agents on YouTube. It's a great way to get a sense of an agent's personality, expertise, and what they bring to the table. Browse through their videos to pick up on insights and see if their style resonates with you. Referrals from trusted sources. Referrals can be gold, especially when they come from a reliable source. For instance, I offer referrals from my trusted network of agents across the United States and also in 24 countries. If I don't personally know an agent in your area, I don't just hand you the name. I interview agents on your behalf to help ensure a good match. And yes, I do earn a small referral fee if you buy or sell a home. But don't worry, it comes out of the agent's mission and not your pocket. And agents are used to splitting their commission, so no worries there either. Google Business Profile. Another great tool is Google. Search for agents, area, and sift through their credentials, online presence, and reviews. Look for agents with strong content and plenty of five-star ratings. Personal recommendations. Ask around friends, family, or colleagues who've recently bought or sold a home. They can provide valuable insights on their experiences with local agents. Avoid these sources. Be very wary of agents assigned to you just because you clicked on a button on Zillow, Realtor.com, or another ad. These are random agents who may not best fit your needs. And if you'd like a handy dandy list of all the questions that you should ask buyer agents that you interview, I've got covered in my video, questions to ask a real estate buyer agent to find the best one for you. Navigating the new real estate laws can be tricky, but 
understanding them is key to protecting your interests as a home buyer. From recognizing hidden fees to knowing how to find the right agent, this video hopefully helped you to make informed decisions. Remember, the right agent can make all the difference in your home buying experience. Hey, if you found these insights helpful, please subscribe. And here's some more content for buyers and sellers. At least these videos should be showing right now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.